Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continue with our lecture series in this uh, optimal control guidance and estimation course. So far you have seen many concepts uh, including linear quadratic regulator for about two lectures and uh, we will continue the discussion on LQR in this lecture as well actually. So this is uh, what is uh, coming up today I mean this lecture. <coughs> this is the uh, outline of the law outline of the lecture first is the review of LQR using state transition matrix approach that means whatever we discussed uh, last lecture we will have a quick review of that because we need to use that next for practical missile guidance application as well. So, just an example of how optimal control from gives us a platform to design advanced guidance laws and all that. More on that we will see little later but one approach using state, trans uh, state transition matrix we will discuss in this lecture actually. Then towards the end of this lecture, we will also talk about uh, frequency domain interpretation of LQR as well as some robustness uh, property results actually. Okay. So, how frequency domain interpretation people can do that? Because typically when you talk about uh, linear uh, systems, then this Laplace transform and other things will come into picture uh, there. So, we will have some idea about what people talk about a frequency domain representation and how uh, it leads to some sort of a equation using which you can also design the gain matrix actually. We will also give an example on that. All right, so first is the summary of what we discussed last time. Uh, this is uh, this is what we discussed. Uh, the st standard LQR problem. We have a quadratic cost function, penalty function at the end, and and cost function for the uh, for the path actually. And the path constraint happens to be state equation. Boundary conditions are given like this. This is the standard form, standard equation that we have been discussing uh, under the framework of LQR. And here we will talk about uh, soft constraint problem. That means uh, x of tf is actually free, it is close to 0 by this minimization, this term minimization actually. Okay. So, this is, uh, this is the problem that we are talking in the under the framework of soft constraint. So, we went ahead and derived all these things. So, for first of all, we noticed that this is phi of x f, this is L of x u and all that and using which Hamiltonian was like that and then this necessary conditions state cost state turn optimal that turn out to be like this and then the boundary conditions happens to be lambda f equal to s f x f. With after that, we went ahead and substituted this control expression in this state equation and then Noted, I mean, we could notice that this can be written as something like x dot lambda dot as a coupled set of equations like this, where this is the AA is nothing but an augmented system dynamics sort of thing. And because it is a linear homogeneous, I mean, homogeneous linear system, we can also uh, write the solution in the form of first state transition matrix, and hence we can write lambda x and lambda at time t is nothing but phi of t t f and x and lambda at time t f actually. By the way, just a comment, uh, some people intend to write it as uh, something like uh, initial condition also. In other words, it will be phi of t, t 0 and then x lambda of t 0. Okay. Again, it depends on your, uh, on your situation and then which is advantage to us and things like that. Some, some, sometimes in the literature, you may see something, something like that. Both are correct actually. Anyway, so writing this way, then we, we could partition this matrix uh, as uh, some phi 1 1, phi 1 2, phi 2 1, phi 2 2, phi 2, 2 sort of thing. And then we could notice that using this boundary condition lambda f equal to s f x f, we can also write uh, this kind of equation where x of t is dictated by x of f through the strain tension matrix x of t t f actually. Now, this algebra we discussed uh, last time already. And then similarly, we can write also write lambda of t in the second half of the equation in the uh, through a fairly similar algebra okay, leading towards that actually. Okay. So, when we do that, uh, when we write it something like this, then uh, x of t happens to be a state transition matrix times x f and lambda of t happens to be another state transition matrix times x f again. Remember, this is not lambda f, this is x f again. 
So, at t equal to t f it must satisfy the boundary condition x equal to x f and lambda f uh, equal to s f x f. So, we can uh, we can get this final boundary condition as well actually by using this boundary condition this turns out to be the boundary condition for this. And also you note that this uh, the state straight transition matrix will satisfy the same differential equation. Okay. So, we have a differential equation and we have a boundary condition. So, essentially you can integrate it backwards and then store the solution and things like that actually. The problem however, is x f is the not known basically okay. because ultimately after getting the solution for the state transition matrix still the solution for x of t and lambda of t requires the information about x of f, x of f is uh, not known. So, how do you handle that? We, uh, we, now, it is easy for because the st state transition matrix representation allows us to write it this way as well x of t 0 equal to x of t 0 t f into x f. So, that is valid because this, this expression is valid for, for any time including initial time. So, we put initial time condition here then we will get x of t 0 equal to x of t 0 t f times x f. So, that is what we write it here and typically state transition matrices are never singular. So, we can always invert it and then get it this way. Okay. So, x of f is an x of f information is available now. So, we can go back to that and then write x of t and lambda of t is something like this okay, because x of t and lambda of t is already there as an expression. Now, we got x f. So, using that expression if you substitute here you get the expression for x of t and lambda of t like this. So, finally, uh, we have the control expression u equal to minus r inverse b transpose lambda. So, you can uh, substitute this lambda of t because you got lambda of t here like that okay. and then you can always uh, define this, this matrix what you see here as some sort of a gain matrix k of t and hence you can write minus k t times x 0 and again it, uh, it, it gives some sort of a sample data feedback law and if you consider wherever you are uh, I mean wherever the condition is that is that being the initial condition then you can represent this, uh, this control law as something like u of t equal to minus k t into x t that is how we get the gain matrix for this actually. So, this is all about soft constraint problem, how about hard constraint problem? We also discuss about that and it turns out uh, that this class of problem demands that uh, there are part of the state vectors is equal to 0 at, the, at t equal to t f and hence we have this, this sort of a formulation okay, which talks about uh, uh, I mean the regular standard LQR problem. However, the boundary conditions demands that part of the states is equal to 0 and that uh, dimension of that uh, that uh, subset can be as high as n actually and in other words uh, the, the entire state vector can be constrained if, if, if it is necessary to do that. Then uh, the regular uh, uh, I mean the, the analysis we discussed about that in last class turns out that because of this uh, hard constraint we have to uh, augmented uh, I mean the cost function turns out to be something like this where nu i happens to be additional Lagrange multiplier sort of constraints actually. Then we carried out the similar algebra, but the boundary conditions turn out to be different. In other words, we have this first 1 to q x of t f equal to 0, but after that q plus 1 to n x of t f equal to 0, I mean lambda of t f equal to 0. Okay. So, we account for all that uh, in the solution procedure. Then you uh, now what we did is uh, we collected the terms of, uh, of these quantities which are non-zero and then define this, this mu vector is something like this actually. Okay. Then using this mu vector we could write this x and x of t and lambda of t something like this and then the analysis were fairly similar to what we had before. In other words the state transition matrices will satisfy the same differential equations. However, the boundary conditions turn out to be something like this actually. Okay. The detailed analysis and, uh, and derivation and all we have already done in the last class actually. So, because of the boundary condition difference. Okay, it, it leads to a very different uh, solution actually. Okay. So, now it turns out that we cannot always claim that this is this uh, x of t 0 t f remains uh, singular I mean non singular, but if it remains non singular then this expression is valid and in that case we can always write this actually. Okay. So, that means the, the form of the solution is fairly similar to what we had before. But the the real actual values numbers will be different because the boundary conditions are different actually. Again, similar to, similar to previous analysis, the continuous in case of a continuous uh, uh, continuous data, that means uh, we have this t zero goes to t and all that. Okay, 
This is a small typo error probably. This should be you. Okay. <coughs> All right. So that is that's a that's a small one. Okay. So this uh, again, if you take wherever the, the state is, that being the initial condition, then you can write the control as something like this. Now here the problem happens that uh, h t goes to t f. Then this approaches that. Okay. But x of t f t f, if you see the boundary condition. It has a bunch of rows actually, with bunch of rows which are zeros. So essentially, x of t f t f is nothing but a singular matrix, okay. and hence uh, there is a problem at the end actually. But that is expected because uh, the ambition was little very high. In other words, we insisted on zero terminal error actually. So uh, I mean, if you have a soft constraint, this problem typically doesn't arise. But if you have a hard constraint, this problem does arise actually. Then the the I mean the usual approach is uh, after some towards the very end when t approaches uh, very close to t f, then you do not update your gain matrix. You just use the previous gain matrix and all that actually. Okay, so that that can be a uh, some sort of a what I call as engineering fix actually. So in practical problems, typically you can do it and mechanize it that way. Okay. Anyway, so this this was the summary of discussion last time and uh, this this class. Uh, I like to use this concept and then apply this through an example, a good uh, example which talks about optimal missile guidance through state transition matrix solution of LQR. So let us see how the formulation is and how where it leads to and things like that. Now, the, what is the fundamental of tactical missile guidance? The situation in a, in a 2D plane, in the plane of engagement, uh, assuming that it is a, it is some sort of a 2D engagement uh, towards the end, you can write it this way. So there is a reference line, typically parallel to, I mean, the horizon sort of thing, horizontal line, and then there is a missile, okay, which is chasing a target. Okay, it is a, okay, there is a missile, and there is a target. Okay, so it is chasing a target. The target is running away with velocity v t. With an angle theta t, with respect to what is called as line of sight. This LOA stands for line of sight actually. And similarly, the the velocity of the missile is something like v m, which is a which is a different angle theta m. And the way it corrects the direction of v m is through applying this lateral acceleration a m. You can think of something like a centrif centrifugal force and things like that way. So uh, the moment you have some sort of a Acceleration that is perpendicular to Vm, then it will try to rotate the Vm vector. So remember, uh, we don't have a thrust vector control and things like that. I mean, we don't have a, a thrust manipulation control. This Vm, we typically is not controlled because there are several reasons for that. Uh, thing is, it's not a very good control manipulation thing, and uh, I mean, you cannot manipulate it as as you wish in a fast dynamic sense. So the Vm is typically left it as, as it is sort of thing. But assuming that V m is larger than V t, that means V m is moving fast compared to V t, then there is a, a only the direction correction of V m is will typically lead lead to engagement. And this concept relies on something like uh, rotation of line of sight vector. I mean, this this is a line of sight vector that you see, the rotation of line of sight vector actually. That means uh, if the line of sight vector does not rotate. Okay, then ultimately it leads to something called a collision case, and it leads to a collision triangle sort of thing. This is what happens actually. If it doesn't, I mean, if you if you, if you start rotating the V M vector properly, okay, manipulate properly, then this is what will happen. In other words, if this is your initial L O S, after some time, this is your L O S, that's your L O S, that's your L O S, like that. These all these, after some time, they remain parallel, and your target appears larger and larger. That means you are approaching the target anyway. Okay, so ultimately, it leads to collision at some point of time. Actually, so that is the whole idea. The whole idea tells us that uh, somehow I to apply some sort of a lateral acceleration. This A M is called lateral acceleration to V M. Okay, and so that it uh, the turning will take place, V M turning will take place, and ultimately it leads to a collision. Actually, that's the whole idea of uh, tactical missile guidance. There are several variants of that, of course, and then one of the variants will talk the That A M should be applied perpendicular to L O S instead of perpendicular to V M. That is geometrically more correct and then uh, more precise also. But uh, applying a perpendicular vector to V M 
is practically easier than compare I mean as compared to applying something which is perpendicular to LOS actually. So, there are there are again mechanization issues and all that and there are also results which shows that it does not really matter. What will matter is the magnitude of AM will vary in such a way that ultimately it both will lead to the similar result sort of thing actually. So, we will confine ourselves to something like this and the results tells us something called proportional navigation guidance which is there for a long time really tells us that AM is nothing but NVM lambda dot actually ok. So, that means, uh, if, if I apply a lateral acceleration perpendicular to Vm something like this, where it is it is proportional to Vm as well as proportional to line of sight rate actually. That means, this angle rate, the rate at which it changes, I will make it proportional to Vm and proportional to lambda dot as well. Then ultimately, it leads to this kind of an expression, where n is known as navigation constant actually. And traditionally, it has been shown before that if, if n is equal to 3, then it has some sort of a optimal performance actually. That is what the major observations before in a classical sense by many researchers. Then it turns out that uh, formally it can be shown that n equal to 3 is nothing but an optimal guidance actually. That is what the main motivation of this particular lecture. I am going to going to take you through this example and prove that n equal to 3 is nothing but a linear quadratic optimal initial guidance actually. Anyway, so this is the problem and we want to solve this problem without knowing this. We want to come up with some sort of a lateral acceleration trajectory, lateral acceleration history rather, which will lead to this collision actually. Then we will correlate this expression with that and so that is this can be represented something like this actually. Anyways, the system dynamics uh, that is that is accounted for is, is quite simple, it is very simple rather. It all tells that there is a missile and there is a target here, the situation is slightly reversed ok. I have actually taken this example from Bryson and Who book actually. So, that the, that book uses some sort of a notation like this, so I thought I will just follow this as well. Anyway, so missile is, is, is here, it moves with a velocity v ok and there is a target here. Uh, so, this is LOS actually line of sight ok. What we are applying is a lateral acceleration perpendicular to V, which is direction A, okay. and this is the velocity vector capital V, and this this is a velocity this, this is the velocity vector along the line of uh, acceleration basically. Okay, so and if you have this uh, this this one, okay, this is V, and T F minus T is something called T go. Okay. So, V into T f minus T will take you there actually assuming V is constant. Okay. So, the velocity missile velocity is assumed to be constant okay. and also on the way we will assume that this angle that sigma what you see is line of sight angle sort of thing that remains small actually. Okay. So, the whole idea here is to somehow close this y t, y t has to be nullified and if T f computation is proper that means, this, this fellow is no other I mean this missile it cannot escape, it has to go to the target actually. At t equal to t f is going there. The question is by the time the what this is called something called uh, down range actually, by the time the down range becomes 0, your height should also become 0. Okay. Then the point lies on the target sort of thing. So, how do we do that? Uh, we will uh, consider the system dynamics as something very simple. Second, I mean this two first order kinematic equations rather v dot equal to a in this direction and y dot equal to v obviously. Okay. So, cost function what you are interested in is uh, to minimize the y f as much as possible. So, this the this the penalty function outside the integral and we are interested in some sort of a lateral acceleration minimization also primarily because lateral acceleration leads to turning and the moment some uh, something is moving and turning the projection area to the fluid flow is larger and it essentially leads to something called induced drag actually. Induced drag is the primary factor for reducing the velocity and all that. We do not want to enter too much of lateral acceleration. So, that uh, we can preserve the velocity that means, we can preserve the energy actually. Essentially, it leads to a high impact velocity as well as a larger range actually things like that. Those are the benefits by having a minimum lateral acceleration. And an additional benefit is as any additional benefit is as for a minimal if your lateral acceleration demand is minimum, then obviously through the autopilot loop and then the control loop and all your your 
Fins, fin deflections will also turn out to be minimum actually. And remember, fin deflections are typically bounded by certain values and all that, actually, their rates and their values and all that. So, having lateral acceleration as minimum as possible uh, uh, helps us in several several other things actually. Okay. So, we account for this uh, this a square minimization on the way, but the primary motivation is to minimize y f actually, okay. y f should be as close to 0 as possible actually, just the reason why this cost function is selected. So, the problem is a pre m this uh, it is not a hard constraint problem, it is a it is actually a soft constraint problem okay. and then this uh, soft constraint problem tells us okay, that y f has to be as close to 0 as possible at the end, while on the way lateral acceleration should be as close to 0 as possible actually. This optimal LQR formulation has this cost function as well as this system dynamic. Now, to proceed further, we first have to formulate uh, exactly put it into the LQR framework and for doing that, we define a state vector okay, V and I mean V and Y that is the state vector U that is a lateral acceleration which is nothing but A that is our control vector or control scalar rather here. And once you define that, then uh, you can represent the system dynamics as x dot equal to x plus v u, where a and b turns out to be like that. Okay. And similarly, because the, there is nothing in the state side here, the q has happens to be all zeros, 0, 0, 0, 0, whereas r happens to be 1 in this framework, and sf happens to be z like this 0, 0, 0, c. Remember, the, the weighting is c times y f, and y f is the second component of the state vector. So, it turns out that c should not appear here, but should appear here rather, just because the definition of state vector is v y and not y v, okay. like that. And also this, uh, this uh, time to go definition is what I told t f minus t, that is the, that's the time to go definition actually, that means how much time is left out for me from here to go and engage with the target actually. Okay. So, then uh, I mean following our results that we discussed uh, I mean a few slides earlier, we first go back to this uh, augmented state of Stanison matrix x dot and lambda dot which is given something like that. Now, we have all these matrices right A we know, B we know, Q we know, R we know, SF we know. So, using all these this uh, augmented state matrix I can write it something like this. Okay. And then a a a, I mean, if I substitute all that, it turns out to be like that. And solution happens to be x of t lambda of t is nothing but phi of t t f into x t f and lambda t f actually. Okay. So essentially, uh, remember this is a linear time invariant system. So phi of t t f is nothing but phi of t minus t f. That is the standard results in linear systems theory. Okay, you can do that as long as the system matrix is time invariant actually. Okay. So, what is the thing? I mean, we want to compute some sort of a because the time invariant case, we can also compute this phi of t minus t f actually. Really. So, first we compute phi of t and then we will substitute t wherever t appears as t minus t f actually. So, what is phi of t in this in this scenario? You nothing know, but e to the power a times t, that is the standard result. So, a already we know this, this is the system matrix. So, what happens to be like e to the power a t is nothing but uh, okay. Let me okay. So e to the e to the power a t okay turns out to be like uh, something like uh, i plus a t plus a square t square by two factorial plus a q t q by three factorial like that actually. So, we have to actually evaluate the in, in this case we have a a. So, everywhere it is a a sort of thing. So, first we have to evaluate a a we already know this matrix. So, a a square is how much okay, then a a q is how much like that actually you have to evaluate. At this point of time I also like to tell that this is uh, e evaluation of e to the power a a t using this, uh, this uh, polynomial expansion sort of thing or exp uh, infinite series expansion is not a very efficient way of doing things. Uh, there are other ways of uh, evaluating it the power a t as well, but uh, we will we'll follow one approach okay, here to demonstrate the idea there. But somebody wants to follow some other approach then it can also be done. For example, it the power a t 
there is another standard results that uh, it is nothing but Laplace inverse of S i minus a inverse actually. Okay, so those of those of you want to follow this way, okay, I welcome you to do that also. The re resolve the problem taking that e to the power a t is nothing but Laplace inverse of S i minus a inverse. So if it is a, a it has to be a also. Basically. All right. Anyway, we will proceed with one approach. So, A we know, we will just evaluate A square and A square happens to be something like this, which is actually good to see because once you see all zeros here, including the diagonal elements, okay, one triangle is completely 0, then it is something called adimportant matrix. That means, you keep uh, taking more and more powers at some point of uh, some, uh, some power will become 0 and hence all other powers there onwards will all become 0. That means, the series which is actually an infinite series truncates at some particular power. That means, the expression does not contain any approximation errors actually. So, this is the situation here. So, A being like this A square turns out to be like that and A q turns out to be like this and A fourth is all zeros. So, from there onwards A fifth, sixth, seventh everything is 0. And hence, we can write the polynomial e to the power a t up to third power only. So, this is i plus a t plus this terms and all that. Now, we know a, we know a square also, we know a q as well. So, we can put it all that and it turns out to be something like this. Now, this is remember this is phi t. Now, what you are interested is phi of t t f, that means phi of t minus t f. So, wherever t appears, we substitute that as t minus t f sort of thing. So, this is what our straight transition matrix in this particular situation actually. Okay, so, using this okay, we want to we do not want to keep on taking T minus T f uh, carrying forward and all that and we it appears heavily in missile guidance literature also basically. So, we define that as something like T go time to go and this is uh, by definition is nothing but T f minus T. So, wherever this T f minus T appears, it is actually T minus T f, but it is nothing but minus of T f minus T sort of thing. So, wherever that term appears, we substitute by T go actually. So, for example, this is nothing but minus T go, this is actually T go like that actually. Okay. So, we substitute this is T go minus T go like that and get it something like this. Now, we have got this partition, that means, uh, it we started with a 2 by, I mean 2 dimensional state. So, we get this is a 4 dimensional matrix 4 by 4. So, we partition that and get this phi 1 1, phi 1 2, phi 2 1 and phi 2 2 actually. So, x of t can be written as like this. Okay. That means, uh, this can be always written as something like that is what we defined before as something like state transition matrix for, for x. Now, we have phi 1 1 of t t f, t minus t f rather whatever and phi 1 2 of t minus t t f as well actually. Okay. So, this is there available that is available. S f we know because S f turns out from the system formulation actually, I mean the problem formulation. So, everything we know, so we can evaluate this the state transition matrix x, x of t t f actually. So, if you put it back all the expressions that we know, it turns out to be something like this, phi 1 1 is uh, this, this expression, this part okay. and then phi 1 2 is that part, okay. you put it together phi 1 1 phi 1 2 and S f, S f is that part, okay, this part. So, we put it together and then evaluate these expressions, it turns out to be something like this. And similarly, for lambda, the state transition matrix for lambda can also be evaluated through this expression and phi 2 1 is available, nothing but all zeros and phi 2 2 is also available, this is the matrix. So, we put it and then S f turns out to be like this and hence it is all like this. Okay. So, x of t t f is some, somewhere like this and lambda of t t f turns out to be like this actually. And hence, lambda t, this is the expression that we, uh, I mean we could notice that. So, lambda of t nothing but lambda of t t f into x of uh, t t f inverse times x t, that is the standard results that we have. Now, we have lambda of t t f which is nothing but this and x of t t f is nothing but that. So, we can put it back. But remember, there is an inverse operation still going on here. You have to take a symbolic inverse here to get get the solution actually. 
anyway so this is what is lambda as a function of x and hence finally the control u is nothing but minus r inverse b transpose lambda where r we know okay b we know and lambda we computed just now actually okay so we substitute the expression for lambda expression for uh, for r inverse b transpose taken together sort of thing turns out to be like this. remember r is nothing but 1 so r inverse is also 1 here and b transpose is what you get here okay so this is uh, this is what it is and then we put lambda lambda is nothing but that so we substitute it here and you simplify this uh, this 2 by 2 matrix inversion uh, can be done symbolically rather easily so you have this one over determinant and then you can take adjoint matrix i mean adjoint elements okay very cofactors what i mean uh, very easily by i mean one over determinant then what will happen is this adjoint matrix turns out that uh, you this diagonal elements will extend the place an off diagonal element will change the sign actually okay so you can use all that or you can go, you can go ahead and compute the inverse symbolically yourself okay starting from first principle and all that then it turns out that uh, u of t or what is a lateral resolution takes this form finally that means if i know v and y i can write it this way and also i need to know t go as well okay so finally the solution of uh, what we need to apply to get it there to catch the to capture the target happens to be this expression and especially if c goes to infinity okay that means okay what's the implication there when c goes to infinity it all means that yf goes to zero as a hard constant actually we we are least bothered about minimizing the lateral resolution on the way induced drag component is not our concern at all in this situation okay you remember there is a one over c term here that one over c will go to zero and then you can further simplify the expressions you get t go square will cancel some term and things like that way and it will like arrive at this expression actually okay now just hold it uh, hold on for a second just uh, we will note it down for a second and then proceed for the different approach actually now what happens here let's assume that sigma is tends to zero sigma is small so i can write 10 10 sigma is nothing but sigma sort of thing so under assumption this is uh, angle so remember this uh, clockwise thing so we just put minus sigma sort of thing so 10 sigma Okay, or rather, ten of minus sigma, whatever we can call, it is nothing but this angle also, same thing. Okay, this this happens to be something like this by this, basically. So minus sigma is nothing but this divided by that. That is nothing but v into t minus uh, sorry t f minus t. And we assume v is constant, so we can take it out, and then this expression turns out to be like that. Now, what is sigma dot then? Okay, this is uh, this is sigma, which is with a negative sign and all that. Okay, so now I can express uh, sigma dot as well. So minus one by v, I'll take it and then take the derivative of this, which happens to be this times the derivative of that y dot. Okay, minus y. Okay, times the derivative of this, which is minus one actually. Okay, so you substitute all that and then get it somewhere like this. Okay, so what I what I notice here is like uh, what we notice if you just take v into sigma dot and multiply with three, then it turns out to be this expression. v into sigma dot is that and 3 times v into sigma dot is nothing but 3 times that and what we obtain here is same thing as you get so what so what it turns out that this this expression what i have here and this entire expression i can substitute as 3 times v sigma dot that's what i told you before that n equal to 3 actually leads to an optimal guidance loss so essentially we started with uh, this expression right uh, this one it happens to be n times v times lambda dot or in this particular case sigma dot actually okay. and i told that n equal to 3 leads to some sort of optimal result and that's what we just showed that n equal to 3 is nothing but an optimal guidance actually but remember this pn guidance is, is an optimal guidance provided there are several conditions needs to be met because in general pn guidance tell there is a navigation constant n okay so under the situation like this that means we consider linear engagement dynamics okay we give, and we also consider non maneuvering or stationary target that means a very slow moving target that means the missile has velocity advantage okay and the los angle is not high okay we assume that this expression right 10 sigma equal sigma sort of thing so los should not be high uh, los angle should not be high okay then induced drag minimization that means uh, through lateral uh, acceleration minimal sometimes lateral acceleration is also called as latex 
is a short form of lateral acceleration sort of thing. Okay, so, induced drag minimization that means, uh, through lateral acceleration minimization that issue is ignored. Okay, we were not bothered about that. Okay. And lastly, this n equal to 3 has to be used. Okay. Under those situations, p n guidance is nothing but an optimal guidance actually. Okay. So, this is just one way of uh, deriving the, the p n guidance uh, uh, relationship through optimal control. Obviously, there are other ways approaches as well and probably we will see one or two approaches as we go along th that way actually. Okay, as we proceed further in this course, from time down uh, we will see how the other the techniques can be brought in and then we can get better and better results also basically. We do not have to really assume, let us say the target is uh, non maneuvering or, or stationary. We can actually assume the target can move, that target can move, target can maneuver. Then what are the things that you can talk about? We will talk something called augmented P n and things like that. So, we will see some of those things as we go along with this through this course probably later. Now, in this particular class as I told, we will also see some frequency domain interpretation and then we will study this, uh, this robustness margin sort of thing. Okay, robustness margin derivation I may not be able to do this class. We will just talk about the results that are available and, and why this uh, this LQR is uh, is popular is, is one of the reasons is also because of this this issue. It gives some sort of a very good uh, robustness margins actually. Anyway, so uh, before going there, we will study this frequency domain interpretation first. So let us start there. So what happens? The optimal trajectory. That means, the closed form trajectory happens to be something like this. Now, I assume that everybody knows what I am talking now because x dot is a x plus b u, but u is nothing but minus r inverse b transpose b times x. So, I have substituted that and then this is the gain matrix r inverse b transpose b. Okay. So, equivalently I can write a minus b k times x actually. This is the closed loop uh, system dynamics and hence uh, the optimal trajectory is dictated by this is this uh, steady equation sort of thing. Assumptions on the way a b is stabilizable and a and square root of q is observable. So, that is uh, those are standard assumptions uh, for LQR solutions and all. Now, here we define an open loop characteristic polynomial okay, which is nothing but s i minus a determinant actually. This is a very standard linear systems uh, concept. If I take s i minus a and uh, evaluate the determinant that will turn out to be a nth order polynomial in S basically so that we talk about as open loop characteristic polynomial. S is the Laplace variable actually. Now, what is a closed loop characteristic polynomial then? Okay. It turns out that uh, that is what lambda c of S what is defined that way is S i minus a minus b k. You see this is your lambda open loop lambda I mean sorry delta open loop delta of S S i minus a. And the closed loop characteristic polynomial is delta c is actually that is defined something like this s i minus a minus b k because that happens to be the system system matrix actually. So, open up the bracket you can write it this way s i minus a plus b k sort of thing and this same thing okay, can be further manipulated and written something like this. Okay. Say I consider s i minus a now together sort of thing and then b k I will multiply s i minus a inverse into s i minus a that is nothing but identity. So, S i minus a I will put it here one, one component and b k times identity, identity nothing but S i minus a inverse times S i minus a, this is a algebra manipulation sort of thing. Once we do that, uh, turns out that S i minus a that, that I can uh, that uh, appears to the right hand side, because I can also assume an i here identity here and I take out that and also we have the standard result determinant of a b is nothing but determinant of a into determinant of b. So, using that result I can take this one this determinant is nothing but determinant of this one the first one into the determinant of that one. Okay. Now, what is determinant of s i minus a there is nothing but open loop characteristic polynomial. So, I can write it this way. So, a closed loop characteristic polynomial is given as something some matrix. Okay times the open loop characteristic polynomial and this particular matrix what you see here is something called return difference matrix. It is a very standard uh, terminology sort of thing actually. 
And on the web, people also use something called loop gain matrix and all that. That is uh, defined as something like this. Only that part with a negative sign. Okay, that is the loop gain matrix. If you put I plus and all that, that becomes return difference matrix sort of thing. Now, Kalman equation in frequency domain is what we are interested in. So, we will uh, start uh, Riccardi equation. I uh, will start with the Riccardi al algebraic Riccardi equation. So, we we'll write it this way. Okay. And then there is a further algebra manipulation here. Okay. The to begin with, uh, what we do is add and subtract this term S times P. P is nothing but the Riccardi equation matrix. So, S P okay, something like this and minus S P. So, we are not what having that. We are just adding and subtracting S P term actually. So, when you do that, okay, this happens to be P into S I minus A here and S I minus A transpose into P from minus S I minus A transpose you multiply by P and then this K transpose R K is equal to Q actually. Okay, you can manipulate that also because see, k is uh, nothing but uh, this r inverse b transpose p actually. So if you if you notice that, then this uh, this entire thing r inverse b transpose p is nothing but k, and then you can multiply. I mean, you can insert some terms and all that. You can write it this way actually. So we keep it aside, and then we further we define something like a phi of s is nothing but s i minus a inverse, and uh, with this definition, phi of minus s is nothing but you so you just put substitute minus s as s wherever s exists uh, you put minus s there it turns out to be like this so phi of minus s transpose is nothing but that but inverse and transpose can uh, I mean can commute so we can put the transpose inside and take the inverse out and then this transpose turns out to be nothing but a a plus b transpose is nothing but a transpose plus b transpose if you use that s i is a, is a symmetric matrix so transpose doesn't matter so it is minus s i minus a transpose whole inverse actually. So, so, that is the observation what we have here. Why we need that? Because this this already there is a term like this okay? so that we somehow we want to end up interpret it that way and then proceed further basically. So, now what we do is take write this expression in terms of this uh, phi s and phi of minus s and then pre multiply by this one and post multiply by that one both sides actually. Okay? So, if we carry out this long hand algebra, it turns out that uh, this equation can be rewritten something like this. Something. Okay. Now, uh, this k is defined as like that. So, r k, if I take uh, multiply both sides, uh, pre multiply both sides by r, turns out to be r k equal to v transpose p. And if I take transpose of both sides, then it happens to be k transpose times r, remember r is a symmetric matrix again, is equal to nothing but p transpose again which is p, p is a symmetric matrix as well times b. So, this is nothing but k transpose r is nothing but p times b. Uh, so, using all this and then adding uh, adding r on both sides whatever you have uh, you add r on both sides it can be written something like that actually. Okay. So, this is uh, I mean if you write it this way fine or you can also write it this way because the phi of t now you can substitute what is phi of s phi of minus s and things like that then essentially this uh, this this equation leads to same thing is that actually okay. just by substituting substituting the definition of phi of s and phi of minus s actually so this particular equation that you see here is nothing but the same ricard equation written in the frequency domain sort of thing okay and this is uh, not called a Riccardi equation, but it is called something like Kalman equation okay? uh, because Kalman is the one who, who came up with this looks like and then, then this is the uh, what is called is Kalman equation in frequency domain actually for control design by the way. Okay? Kalman equations can be very famous for uh, for filter design as well actually, but this this comes from this uh, algebraic Riccardi equation for control design. So, this is actually Kalman equation for control design. Now, the the uh, and the beauty is we can use this equation to come up with a gain matrix or uh, in a particular example problem and we do not need any of those uh, I mean our solution of the uh, Riccardi equation and things like that actually. Let us go through an example and make our, our ideas a bit little more clear. So, we take a double integrator problem x 1 dot is x 2 and x 2 dot is u sort of thing that means x 1 double dot is nothing but u instead of this kind of a double integrator problem. 
So, performance performance index which take a standard uh, LQR performance index something like this <coughs> ok and this uh, by the way there may be there is a small mistake here probably this is a half term there ok All right. Now, this uh, this is a problem there is a cost function and there is a system dynamic actually. So, we have to first identify various matrices. So, A happens to be like this, B happens to be 0 1, Q happens to be identity because both the terms are here x 1 square x 2 square and R happens to be 1 because U square is available. So, all this A B Q R is available now. Now, what happens remember we are we want to apply this term actually. So, you have B are now available, Q available, R available, A available like that actually. Okay. Now, the Kalman equation is nothing but that okay, whatever you see here it can be written as something like this. Okay. Where S i minus a inverse okay, happens to be like this yeah. okay, because S i minus uh, S a is available, a matrix is available. So, you calculate S i minus a symbolically and then take S i minus a inverse symbolically also basically, it will turn out to be like this. Now, we define gain as k 1 1 k 1 2, remember gain has to be a row matrix in this particular case as a single input system anyway. So, gain has to be k 1 1 k 1 2, we do not know the values of k 1 1 k 1 2 yet, we want to compute it using Kalman equation actually. Yeah. So, what we do? We substitute that okay, in this equation especially directly and we can uh, we can now retain whatever k 1 1 k 1 2 symbolically. Okay. And this ultimately after uh, simplification of this matrix multiplication and things like that will lead us to this kind of an expression actually. Okay. And here we can actually equate the coefficients of various uh, powers of this uh, this 1 by s square, 1 by s q, s fourth like that. Okay. And ultimately we will see that okay, 1 is equal to 1 anyway, this is uh, otherwise it is uh, 2 k 1 1 minus k 1 2 square is nothing but minus 1 here and then k 1 1 square is nothing but 1. So, k, if k 1 1 k if k 1 2 uh, if k 1 1 square equal to 1 then k 1 1 is uh, is 1 equating this to that there is a coefficient 1 here that means k 1 1 square is nothing but 1. So, k 1 1 is 1 and k 1 2 if 1 2 once you have this k 1 1 1 and th this expression happens to be minus 1 basically. So, this is uh, minus 2 and then it is minus 1 and then you take it to the other side it becomes 3, but that is k 1 1 2 k sorry k 1 2 square equal to 3. So, k 1 2 happens to be square root of 3. And obviously, you can always argue what happens to this plus or minus things and all that actually, but then turns out that if you, if you select k 1 1 1 and, and uh, k 1 2 as square root of 3, uh, then it leads to a stabilizing controller actually. Okay. All other things will not lead to stabilizing controller and which happens uh, in the Ricard equation solution directly also like you will have a multiple solutions for Ricard equation and it, uh, you select the one which is positive definite solution actually and then only it will lead to stabilizing controller. So, similar ideas exist here and out of uh, we eliminate this minus uh, roots and we take the positive roots and, uh, and, and come up with the gain matrix. And this gain matrix 1 square root of 3 that matrix can be also derived by solving this algebraic Ricard equation formulation and I encourage all of you to do that uh, using your pen and paper long hand algebra actually do not do not really have to go through this uh, this MATLAB formulation and all that, but quickly you can also those of you do not do not have time or want to have quick answer and things like that you can also use this LQR function of MATLAB and just uh, type in these values a b q r and the, the immediately the gain matrix will pop up and that will be nothing but 1 and square root of 3 basically. So, this is about uh, this uh, how do we use this Kalman filter and how do you I mean how do you do this uh, uh, I mean how do you make use of uh, this uh, Kalman equation rather for control design for problems actually. But this is not the main motivation for, for having the Kalman I mean Kalman equation actually people uh, people come up with this and then it the further analysis tells us that how do how, what is the frequency response actually that means uh, what we know is uh, some sort of an equist diagram, body diagram and things like that. Can we really do, can't we really do that actually? And answer turns out to be yes. Then what happens is uh, the like what we do in, in linear system dynamic uh, analysis, we substitute s equal to j omega okay, 
and then using that analysis we will proceed further and then derive this root locus diagram, body plot, nucleus plot all sort of things actually. So, that analysis I will not cover here, but those of you are interested actually this part of the thing I have taken it from, from uh, D S Naidu book and those of you are interested you can see the book for, for further analysis actually. But the interesting result turns out to be something very good and it turns out that uh, this entire result LKR formulation has a very good robustness property and the gain margin happens to be minimum half and maximum there is no bound actually it can be infinity also. Okay. And the phase margin can be at least 60 degree, it can be more than that, but at least 60 degrees is guaranteed actually. All that of course, happens with exact state feedback. Okay, if the state exact state feedback is not there, that means you use some sort of a estimated state and things like that, then these margins are concerned, it does not satisfy these margins. And then there are concepts of LQG, LTR and things like that, we will probably see it uh, down the line actually. But assume that uh, exhausted feedbacks are available and most many times it does available by the way as long as you talk about controlling your own system dynamics okay, without uh, the need for an exogenous uh, input for controlling. In other words, you know, unless if you talk about a missile guidance problem, we need to know where the missile is, what angle it is going, whether it is stationary or moving away and things like that. Those information cannot be declared by the by the good sensors in the in the target actually. Target uses its sensors to do its own job, but it cannot reveal its own own strategy and things like that. For that, we have a some sort of a seeker or radar measurement and things like that. There, it is a need for some sort of estimation in the loop actually. Otherwise, uh, now for many 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 costly systems, that means many many uh, good systems. So we have uh, good sensor equipments and uh, all available. So, if the if the system is heavily equipped with good quality sensors, then you can actually get all the state feedback uh, without a, a mean estimation in the loop sort of thing. Actually. So, then you can actually implement it and you can show that uh, gain margin is a minimum half or maximum infinity and phase margin is at least 60 degree. By the way, there is a little bit interesting discussion here that um, I mean earlier days these, uh, these control gains and all were, uh, were actually synthesized using analog devices. So, there was some chance of having this uh, gains, uh, whatever what you intend to do, intend to give it to the system, the actual gain would have been something different actually. Okay. And uh, that is no more a concern because it is, uh, I mean nowadays it is all digital control actually. So, we actually compute it in a, comp in a computer and then hence feed it back to the system. That means, there is no, no, I mean there is no relevance of gain being inaccurate and things like that. But still gain margin, gain margin is a very important concept primarily because uh, any amount of system parameter inaccuracy will ultimately reflect in some sort of an equivalent gain perturbation in the closed loop system. If you have system parameters which is not uh, what you assumed in the control design something else then it can be equivalently described as some sort of a perturbation in the gain value actually. So, that is how it is uh, still important even though we have digital computers actually. And similarly, phase margin has a time domain interpretation of uh, what is called as delay margin nowadays. And delay margin is, uh, I mean if you remember this phase margin essentially comes with this uh, time delay uh, input of the signal actually. So, uh, then delay uh, is an inherent phenomenon, you can have sensor uh, input, uh, I mean sensor output delays, you can have transport delays, you can have computation delays and things like that. And with the advancement of all these uh, technologies and, and computers, the gain margin, I mean the phase margin or the time delay margin is a, is a, a high time delay margin is probably not required because things are things can be uh, done in a very efficient way. That means the the good margin requirement from phase point of view may not be very stringent nowadays. But but we certainly need something, okay, some gain margin, uh, some phase margin as well because we. No matter how fast is the computer, no matter how far, I mean, whatever it is, there, there will be some amount of transportation delay, some amount of uh, computational delay, and things like that. So the system must have some sort of a positive phase margin, okay, for for successful operation actually. There is another. Uh, there are many concepts, ideas like that. For example, this uh, gain margin and phase margin, they can they have to be positive for a for a stable system, and they happen to be both zero at the same time. It cannot have uh, like 1 0, 1 non 0 and then the other one becomes 0 later and all that. They, they can start with something and but then when they happen to be 0, they happen to be 0 at the same time actually after which the system goes unstable actually that way. 
So, then anyway, but those uh, concepts of gain and phase margin are, are classical control concept. Uh, like, uh, interested students can find many typical books around that to have lot more ideas there. The whole point here is uh, if you have LQR design, it is optimal control design and essentially it not only does a lot of jobs the compared to let us say a, um, a typical PID controller or, or pole placement design. Because remember pole placement design is, is ok provided you have single input. If you have multiple input uh, then there are not so easy things to do or not so good things to do actually. Then we can talk about control scheduling things like that, but then it is not very scientifically done. The one way of control scheduling is through LQR control actually. So, LQR is a lot of other things, a lot of uh, uh, good properties associated with that and hence it has been uh, heavily used as well actually. So, with that I think I will stop this lecture and we will see the further things in the next lecture. Thank you.